I know before the just so many things and it's such a wide variety of activities um, and you know we have a lot of great things to, to think about but actually I got some things for some teachers here really? yeah yeah see I got a couple friends. pages here. They're willing to talk. Well, many teachers are willing to talk um, but some of the things that came up that I think we can we fully agree with and it just some make us so proud to have you at the high school um, Laurel's incredibly bright and a dedicated student had a lot more to say those Cole Mr. Estrom uh, Mr. Brager said Laurel's a kind and intelligent student who always puts forth her best effort. She leads by example in a quiet yet powerful manner, inspiring those around her through her consistent dedication, unwavering work ethic, and thoughtful decision making. That's, that's pretty good, right? Glowing reviews. Really. Glowing reviews. Uh, Coach Adnett, Piper. Piper. S yes. Uh, said during the cross country season, Laurel brought a positive attitude every day to practice and meets. No matter the weather, Laurel had a smile on her face and could be found laughing with her friends. When most runners weren't racing, they'd be found walking around the meet or under the tent, not Laurel. She would join every team huddle before the varsity girls would race with her arms around them, hyping them up and telling them, you are strong and you can do hard things. That's a saying from Ms. Felson herself. Oh, well. <laughs> our wonderful new AP Cup teacher. Yes, yes. Um, other cross-country coach, uh, Coach Chancer, said, I was amazed at how many different activities, clubs, organizations she was involved in. But even with that full plate, she always managed to show show up and make the most of her time on the team. Ms. Clark, Laurel, also knows how to make learning fun by encouraging classmates to extend their own thinking and understanding. And Ms. Lemke, I love how Laurel is just a sincere person and just a pleasure to have in class. Uh -huh. uh, all wonderful things. When we think about students at Mount Horror, when we think about people that walk the halls and just show such leadership and encourage and are willing to stand up, I think of even the staff meeting at the, the energy group. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I love the energy team. The energy team, right? We yeah. should get solar panels. Yeah, see, 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 see. <laughs> well, <laughs> fun there. <laughs> Loves to advocate. Um, maybe even did some advocacy for teacher pay during the staff meeting. It was, it was great. It was, it was well done. 
Um, but we're always so proud to have a, a student and having Laurel as part of our as part of the high school, but knowing that we get another year with her after this, which is always great. Sometimes you have you have students like this, you're like, oh, I know they're a senior, they've been involved so much. No, you're still stuck with us for another year and a half. More. You do, you do. Um, so we're we're so excited to have her here and celebrate her all she's done. I don't know, Ms. Corker, Miss Nessheim. No, I just, you know, she's just well-rounded in, in all the little niches and, and more than anything, like I was just telling mom, she's kind. And I know that's what we want, right? When our kids leave the building, is a kind person that's looking out for, for everyone and that's her. And she has time to do everything else on top of it. So, yeah. congratulations. And like multiple AP courses, like yes. all these things and AP courses. And so, yeah, just a great representative of the high school and we're excited to, to celebrate. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank Make you. us better as a high school. Yeah. Feel special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, would you care to introduce these very special yes. fan base members? Yes. Yes. So sister Sophia and my mom. And my dad says that he's super sorry to miss the super secret special photo club. But he is ill, <laughs> so he could not be here. Well, we're sorry he's not feeling well. Maybe we'll Photoshop him in or something. Yeah. <laughs> as a small token of appreciation for your outstanding efforts, we have this certificate for you. We hope that you display that very proudly within your home. And uh, exclusive okay. pin for you to wear proudly, uh, maybe on your lapel or something. Can we give Laurel a round of applause? take a picture with you and yeah, our board of, of education president also happens to be our high school liaison uh, and would love it if maybe you could join yeah. us too please and thank you there's a great um, bulletin board that says be kind oh. how perfect is that <laughs> perfect. Well, thank you for a and we do that we'll be back we'll 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 great work we'll 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 too, please. Yes. we got a big spot <laughs> <laughs> basketball team they were just at the University uh, up at uh, Mequon 
uh, with a competition on Thursday. Wrestling was up at uh, UW Lacrosse uh, for an invitational. Uh, boys uh, Swim had a meet, an invitational at Verona High School this past Saturday, and our girls basketball was out there at Mineral Point. So uh, lots going on over the holiday break. Uh, they got involved, and then I'm excited because this Saturday I get to go to the Forest High School and I get to judge the district DECA competition. And it's one of the highlights of every year for me. You see the kids get the kids. The students get so dressed up that what they've done to prepare for their special competition and event is just really powerful. And so I know we'll come back with a large number of young people who will be moving on to the next level uh, in February. So uh, just wish them well on Saturday. Thank you. Does anybody else? I know we're I have, I have two. Um, one, the PTO Culver Share Day is June 30th from 4 until 7. June? Sorry, January. I was like, thank January. you for giving yeah. us a lot of notes. Can you remind me that he gets January, I, it's right here. I just can't read it here. Um, and then Friday night at 5.30, uh, at Kiva, which so it's not really school related, but it kind of is because the soccer team is split into two teams. There's a senior team and then a U18 team, and they play each other. Um, and if you've never seen indoor soccer, it's like real life foosball, and it's hilarious. So you can come cheer on the boys at 5:30. Very nice. Does anybody else have any school news? Okay. Moving on. Do we have any citizens' comments this evening? I didn't see any. Personnel transactions, is there anything to point out? Uh, there is an addendum tonight, board members, and I want to take note to extend uh, thanks to the board for allowing us some flexibility with hiring given our one board meeting here in December. You can see that uh, Aaron and our hiring administrators have been awfully, awfully busy, so thank you. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve? Motion to approve with the agenda. Second. Motion by Leah, second by Carly. All those in favor of approving our personnel transactions, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Number five, consent agenda. Is there anything anyone would like to pull out to discuss? And Dr. Schlano, you have Yes, to please excuse me for just a moment. Um, we were unable to get um, the paperwork from uh, Middleton Cross Plains, so we're going to pull tonight's Girls Hockey Cooperative. We'll bring that back to uh, January 15th, meeting, please, and thank you. Motion to approve consent agenda. <coughs> Motion by Leah, second by Carly to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Number six, discussion item. Committee member reports. I can begin and say the community coalition has not met since I last uh, reported out. Our next meeting is January 23rd. Joel, do you have anything for the village and not for the liaison report? Uh, the village board met a month ago, and the only thing of note that they mentioned was extension of the school zone down to the bottom of the hill uh, past the bike path. Uh, that's under consideration right now, which seems like a that green space that's like across yeah, the street? Yeah, oh. yeah, because a lot of kids cross over there. Mm -hmm. Right now the school zone ends about halfway up the hill. Mm -hmm. So. Any questions for you? <clears throat> Jim, Finance Committee? Yes, we met December 11th and we accepted a $1,005 donation from Mount Horror 10.0 Club, which is the gymnastics club for the purchase of a new balance beam and mat. So that was a generous donation. And then we reviewed policy 631. Uh, our district's bond council has reviewed this. It's, it's basically tax exempt and tax advantage obligations and realized it was perhaps too long and a lot of it was just admin regs. So we're looking at rewriting some of that and we'll bring that to a future board meeting. And then we spent the last uh, half of the meeting reviewing our calendar and, and just kind of a summary through October and then looked at our 24-25 budget which will be much easier knowing what we know 
So our next meeting is January 8th, so next Monday night at 4.30. Do you want to talk about our joint education and safety and wellness committee meeting? Yes, yeah, so I was trying to remember back on this. I feel like I reported I think you reported on it right after. Right afterward. Yeah, yeah I but I, I, I so. could do education, which occurred right before this. If you want to, or do you need to wait until here? Yep. I think wait because it's not on the yep. agenda. Yeah. But you are up next if you have anything to share with the village's park recreation at Fulham Street. There was no December meeting because okay. that would have been right over the holiday week. Yeah. All righty. Our next discussion item: Brian Johnson and Sarah Straka to talk about day of service. Thanks. So, we have an upcoming day of service on January fifteenth. Um, normally, this is a day where we um, commit to a day of professional development for our staff. Um, and while some staff will be receiving professional development, um, for the remaining staff, we have kind of flipped it and decided to do um, a day of service um, where we have provided multiple different venues um, for um, employees to volunteer, um, receive professional development, joining a Martin Luther King celebration across anywhere in town or surrounding towns. And if they participate in any of these opportunities, that's considered their 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 work for the day. Within that, um, I was a little skeptical, thinking, are staff going to do a day of service when they have grades and mm -hmm. all these other things that they need to get done as they're closing a semester and starting a new semester? Um, so, in looking at how many people signed up, we had. So when we think of our certified staff, we have about 200, 210 certified staff when you add in administrators, nurses, teachers, everybody. So 80 people committed to doing some type of volunteer service or participate in one of our in-house learning opportunities. Um, we still have to assign 27 staff, so that's about half of our staff who will be doing some type of day of service activity. As Brian mentioned, we, we have some other staff who are ready um, supposed to be going through some trainings, whether it is for their their letters training or for other aspects of our reading program. So that's about 40 staff members who are unable to do the active service. So that's a really good number of people who are partaking in this. So I was pleasantly surprised. So that was neat to see. Part of that um, also in, in some of the, the sessions are occurring here at the school. Um, so they come here, participate in some learning opportunities. Um, and we're having some baked goods um, from a company called Just Bakery. Um, <clears throat> Just Bakery is a 12-week education vocational training program um, that hires employees who have significant barriers to employment, whether that's homelessness, um, justice that are involved, lack of education, and or lack of work history or skills. And so it uses a really specific program um, and then if you complete the whole 12-week program, um, you're automatically admitted into the Madison College um, culinary um, program um, with 12 college credits already, already to start. So um, it's that they just sound like they're doing some great stuff, so they'll provide, be providing us for the, the snack of the day. So it's kind of all around different opportunities. And if you've seen, if you watched, you know, I mean, we could list all of the different places, right? You can see those that, that people have already volunteered to work and receive education. Um, we're also, and do you want to talk about this, or with um, the students? You do that, and I'll do the, well, the last part. Or how, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do one thing first. <laughs> so, I mean, none of this would have happened without the, the vision from Dr. Salerno and our team, but also our partnership with the United Way of Dayton County. We met with them once or twice, shared the vision of where we wanted to go with this day, and they just ran with it. They found all of the organizations that, that they partnered with, the Just Bakery that Brian was talking about. They, they really added so much value to, to this day for us. Um, it wouldn't have made, been made possible without them. So we have a, a huge thank you to the United Way of Dayton County. So our high school administration, too, after working with our district equity team, um, and said like why don't we get students involved in this too um, and so um, we're kind of giving the opportunity to juniors and seniors to participate in some of this um, these activities as well 
Um, and so they're promoting it from a high school level, having kids sign up for it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be attending the school districts, the high school social justice um, club um, on Thursday morning to talk about the opportunities as well. So um, it'll be kind of a joint um, student slash educator experience and should be some great opportunities. Your schedules allow for it. I know how busy you are, but there's some neat activities taking place that morning um, right here in the, in the building. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, no, no pressure, though. I recognize many of you are busy working yourselves, but we're eager to share the results with you. Uh, we also know uh, that our staff, they give of service every day in what they do. It's the nature of their jobs. This is just a different way uh, to look at service. Um, we don't want to negate the, the impact that they have each and every day on, on the children and the families that we serve. And this is just another way in which we can hopefully demonstrate our unabiding appreciation for, uh, for others. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Don. Thanks. 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 Moving on to our action items. First up is the first reading of Board of Education's January 2024 editorial letter. Carly and Aubrey. So I can just set it up and then I'll let Aubrey take over. But as a reminder, this, this goes back to the schedule we reviewed a couple of months ago of, of uh, pieces to place in the Mount Horn mail on a regular basis, um, one of which is staff appreciation, which Aubrey can talk through what she's done here. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this is just a thank you op-ed for our staff for pouring their hearts and souls into uh, shaping our students. And so in addition to the thank you, the op-ed states, don't just take our word for it, here are a few words from our Vikings. And so we've amassed uh, some really nice comments from our students into a conversation heart. And I have run this past Matt at Mount Horror Mail and he has approved. So we'll be able to include that in the op-ed if you guys approve. Does anybody have a question? I have, um, I think this is fantastic. Thank you. I have tiny uh, yes. wording. Oh <laughs> Can we just say innovative programs and get rid of initiatives? Only because sometimes people don't love initiatives. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do like just, just get rid of that deal. Can do. Good and then my only oh I had two. And oh, my yeah. only other thought was um, instead of shaping the minds of our students, growing. Well, you can say no to either, but those were my two thoughts. But otherwise, thank you for putting this together. I think it looks fantastic. I love that you have all the quotes. Thank you. Any other edits? The edits which you get quotes from? For individual students at each of the four schools. Oh, nice. Yeah. Took a couple months. I love how inclusive it is with talking about different different staff, teachers, bus drivers, custodians, librarian, I did a very good job. Yeah, thanks. Cool, oh, great. Thank oh. you guys so much. Motion oh, yeah. to approve. Second. Motion by Aaliyah, seconded by Jim to approve of our um, January 2024 editorial letter. This is the first reading, so roll call. Please. Joel? Yes. Brad? Aye. Leah? Yes. Jim? Yes. Adam? Yes. Carly, yes, and I'm also yes. Thank you, guys. Carly, you're up again. First reading of yes. Consider Revisions to the Board Policy 185.1, Community and Legislative Engagement. So over the last couple of months as we met, one of the first things we did is take a look at the policy that discusses the role of the committee. Um, and the changes in here really <coughs> what we, as we read it, what we realized is that the what was written really focused on the legislative part of the committee, but really didn't talk about the 
the, the community engagement part of it at all. So a lot of what you see here is one, just a little reorganization to kind of give some consistency to the document, but then two, in the lower half, is really more something around fleshing out the, the community engagement um, items. legislative information and to form the board I just kind of I thought that some of the things should be flipped around like uh, let's see 1b keep the board informed of all legislative matters as they relate but then number two is to inform the board so I was like well maybe 1b should be under two and then 2a meet area legislators on proposed legislation at the direction of the board Maybe that should be under receive you know, legislative information. Do you see what I'm saying? Like some of them I just thought maybe needed to be rearranged a little to match the heading. Uh, I know we were focused mostly on the addition of the community piece. And then my other thought was, um, if you don't mind scrolling back down, <laughs> the one and two are sort of similar um, in that they're both about informing the public. We don't have anything about you know receiving feedback or input, so I didn't know if we wanted to revise one of them. Is that not in the? Scroll down a little further. Oh, is it down? Oh, okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. 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 Right. Would you prefer that? I mean, I didn't. I didn't even think about it until you just said it that those are. No, because I yeah. read this and I was kind of we, when we've been talking about yeah. the committee, we were talking more about oh, we need to add in the community engagement piece. And then when I was reading it over the weekend, I was like, oh, some of these kind of need to be re like they're not wrong. They just need to be under different headings. So, whatever you all think. I think one and two are two different. I agree. Later, so for this part, oh. I think there are two different things. Yes. Oh, but sorry, I was talking about. Oh, you were talking about. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Up, gotcha. Up, up there. Sorry, okay. we were jumping because I was talking. I made comments at the beginning and I'm sorry. I'm with you. <laughs> we were consistent. Ooh, we're Christmas back was forth. great. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear what you're saying. You're saying yeah, you're okay. suggesting that two A might be better suited in somewhere in the one, and then maybe one B go one under B two. Go under two. I think 1B, the focus there is that it's the appointment of the legislative liaison. Oh, that was the other thing. Why do we have that? Why don't we just um, end it at, um, we, we just don't need that whole part about the via the appointment of a, we, we don't have a legislative liaison. And, you know, we noted that currently it's the chair, but why don't we just yeah, strike that via, I mean, if everyone else is fine with that. I mean, we just, unless we want to change it to, of the committee, but we just don't have a legislative liaison. So if we're going through the effort to revise it. So is it as I'm just trying to think through is it as simple as just moving one B down to under two, number two? 2A goes up. Yeah. So swap those and end this sentence if that's currently in 1A at, as they relate to the district and other school districts. Period. I think that's fine. I have one other question on five on the bottom, just about the representation or active participation. How are we doing in that? And is that list um, completely up to date? This number five here? Uh, yes, that one. Yeah, this was uh, reflective of the um, examples of things that we participate in. So I am a member of the Chamber of Commerce. 
Um, I'm a member of the Community Development Authority. Um, we have members of the board who are part of the Community Coalition. Mm -hmm. Um, many of us have served on the interview teams for hiring fire and police officers and um, a board member and myself are usually part of the joint review one time a year. This is not an exhaustive list. If there's others, we're happy to add them. I mean, I, it says such as, so I don't think it has to be exhaustive. Okay. Exhaustive. I was just uh, curious about that. Yeah. While we, were, while we had it on the board. You know, I should probably put down things like the Forestry Committee, you know? Sure. Because you do that. Sure. And, and then Joel's on the... Maybe you put maybe like Village Committee as a right. I don't know. Maybe we'll just <coughs> no. I think the more specific we get there, uh, it sets us up for failure for future boards. Having to provide the view. Well, we do say such as, so it's yeah, not like, it's pretty like pretty. yeah, it, right. it's just ideas of things, but not that we have to. This doesn't say that we have to be on those committees. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any edits or questions or comments? Would anyone like to make a motion to approve with the revisions we've talked about? So moved. I will second. Motion by Leah, second by Jim to approve the revisions to board policy of 185.1 <coughs> community and legislative engagement. This is also a first reading. Joel? Yes. Rod? Yes. Leah? Yes. Jim? Yes. Adam? Yes. Carly? Yep. And I also yes. 7C, first reading, consider revisions to board policy 421.1, legal age kindergarten. Sir Chaka. Not a lot of changes to this policy uh, per the USB. We just offer recommendation to clarify the language a little bit more in the first paragraph, stating that uh, students, um, just not allowing the students uh, to be permitted to for no kindergarten before we turn four by September 1st. So we had the similar idea of language that's crossed out, but just being more specific in the language, so we put that there. And then further down in the policy, um, step one, um, really any, any requests for a student to um, maybe start school earlier, um, earlier than the age of five by five year old kindergarten really should go to the principal, not to Dr. Salerno as that process starts. Uh, so we made the adjustment there. But then at the end of this policy, when we look at step four and five, we remove step five, um, which actually takes out the school board in having the appeal process. The appeal process will go directly to the superintendents. We have this in other policies, so it doesn't mirror other policies. The point where the school board comes in within legal age and, and pupils either in kindergarten or in first grade is that the school board really sets the standards for the procedures, the criteria, the process. The implementation of it comes down to us. So we wanted to make sure this policy mirrored the spirit of the statute, but then also mirrored current policies we have within our policy book. So that's why number five was removed. And I believe those are the big changes. Any questions for Sarah? Leah? I have, I have a few. Okay, so in the first paragraph, we've changed everything from like he, she, to they, whenever possible, so we should probably change, sorry, the second paragraph, first sentence. Um, Great, oh, thank you. And that. then, why? Because we've changed everything else today. So, um, and then, uh, okay, the whole second paragraph is, it's, it's bad. I know we've had it for forever, but it's, so it says no child will be admitted, none. Then we say unless you do this thing. So you you can't really say you can say no child will be admitted unless they do this thing, but we we start with no, can't do it. So it it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't say that's a, there's a period. So end of discussion. They can't be admitted. 
then do this thing. I just, I, I don't like the sentence. And if, if it's just me, that's fine. And I will, I will let it, it's not a hill I want to die on, but it really bugs me. So you don't like either sentence, the one I, in red and the one that's open? The nope, the one, in, the one in red is fine because they don't have, there's no way for a four-year-old kindergartner to, unless there is, and then we don't <coughs> have it in here, to request early admittance. So you can't request early admittance to 4K, right? Correct. Okay, so then that's perfect, because okay. we're not gonna do that. But in the second paragraph, it should say something, you know, no child may be admitted, blah, 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 unless they pass whatever we're calling the early admittance process or something to that effect. Because, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> and again, if I'm the only one, I, it's not a hill I'm gonna die on, so it's fine. But it bugs me. Is there a concern about clarity, or just it, the? It's just it. It the says preference of wording. It's just it says the policy, and it says we are not admitting anyone who's not five, unless unless, unless we do this thing. <laughs> so there needs. To, it's just not. It's clear, but it still bugs me because it says we're not going to do it, but we are. We could do it. Is it just me? Because I'll just let it go. I really, really will. No, I remember reading this a few times. Um. I understand your point about the distinction. That the 4K is an absolute. Right, 4K is an absolute, and, but. In 5K, there are exceptions. Right. Could we, and could we use the word typically, comma, no That's child, maybe? Right, That's perfect. That's Great. Something so. we're just we start with no, and then we're like, but maybe like <laughs> that's I think the part that gets me. So, I think I was at, is that change okay? Yeah. I'm, I should yes. So you can make that change. Yes. So, so I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm gonna, I don't want to waste any more time on it than needs to be wasted. But is this they? Use of they, is that written into one of our policies? Because if not, it's nonsensical. It, I, I know what Fowler says. I know what going back in the language, you know, that they has been used as a single pronoun. I know all that stuff. In that sentence, it's nonsensical. Because we, <laughs> we, we, know, we know that the, the antecedent is, is singular. So that's, this kind of stuff is, I, I don't know why we do it. It's tortured, it's nonsensical in a sentence like that. And so, you know, it just, it makes, it just, I, I don't know why we waste our time trying to do gymnastics around pronouns like that. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense at all. Did you have other questions? You said you had others. No, I saw the next, I have questions now on the next okay. policy. Okay. Is there anything else on this one? Yep, could you go down uh, just a minute? So why did we, this, this fir the first sentence of number one, written request shall be made by the children's parent. But maybe we, I, let's just rewrite this, right? So it is a parent or guardian of the child. We can't put parents in parentheses because children do have two parents. All right, so let, let's, let's back it out and, and, and write it the right way. There are children who could not have two parents. No, there is no children on earth who doesn't have two parents. If you have a deceased parent, your parent is not filling out I, this form. Th that's exactly right. But that's exactly right. But but, but a, that's why that's why I suggested what I did. A parent or guardian of the child. Okay. Uh, the paragraph above, the parents will be notified of the results, so should that one then be the parent slash guardian? Mm -hmm. This is the first reading, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Let's get them right on this. Parent slash guardian. I heard it. We can go through it. And we usually catch that, so thank you for that. And then the, the rewording piece is easy to do as well, Rod. Okay, so this is also a good point. We say if the parents and guardians move into the district, but really it's if the, the child moves into the district, right? Like, if there's... If the family. If the family, like... Right. Yeah. 
if they, can we use they? Is it inclusive I, I, of all the people I, in the? I, I think you can. Okay. Just check. Yeah. Yeah. What was that again? Sorry. I was uh, to sorry. Uh, one, so procedure B1, and right. then give a parent, yep. guardians move. Just if, if they move. Right. If. That would be inclusive of the child. <coughs> and parents, guardians, all the people. Right. Pets. <laughs> We do have some families that have their children in two different districts. Might I suggest that we say if the student moves into the district? And that's kind of where my point was because you could have some but not all. Yeah. Can I, do that? I think it, I mean, it is the student ultimately. Yeah. Right. Because they're the ones who want to go to school here. Got it. Number two, there's another reference to parent or guardian. Are we okay with how this reads? It's the same situation. So it should be with a parent slash guardian, right? And get rid of the S? No. Nope. I thought we were nope. getting rid of no, the, I thought you didn't want for the different, For a different reason. Yeah. That makes sense. I think the two is okay. Oh, four needs to be parents slash guardians. Um, do they have so many days to appeal? Or like if we decline them, like say no today, can they come back a week before school starts and appeal? Like That's a great question. Typically, our appeals process has 10 calendar days. We want to tell them to that. That certainly, I'll always listen to the parent just because maybe there's something we've missed or there's some some additional piece of information. But you know, we can certainly uh, place a time frame in there if you think that's appropriate. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how <coughs> many we decline and how many appeal. It's very rare. That's what I figured. Um. So what if we have a split decision amongst parents? You know, one parent appeals one. One doesn't. Yeah. That's the beauty of it being a team decision as opposed to any one person. Uh, our parents are part of that team decision and it also includes the insights of the school psychologist, the director of instruction, and others who are there to offer wraparound support to the child. This really doesn't come up very often. I'd say probably in the eight years I've been here, maybe twice. Um, three. The last sentence are marked different from other children his her chronological does we don't even need his her from the children's chronological age oh. <laughs> do you want me to look for officer comments real quick while I'm at it no I think I think there's uh, Yeah, um, just to back up to the to the principle of it. So you can't get into 4K if your birthday is September 5th, but you can get into kindergarten if your birthday is September 5th. So unfortunately, like the kids who are in that position wouldn't benefit from 4K to get them ready for kindergarten. Am I interpreting that right? Can you see that last sentence again? It, you can get into kindergarten if your birthday is September 5th, if you're able to show that you've demonstrated progress, but you can't get into 4K. So those kids would not benefit from the 4K that might prepare them for it. It's a choice, yeah. So whether to go 4K or not is yep. basically the choice, or go or apply for early admittance entrance to kindergarten. So right. they could, so parents making this decision could be making it rather early and thinking about their child. But they won't have the option. Of, my point is, it's like, you know, I was the September 10th birthday. Mm -hmm. My parents could not, under our policies, enter me into 4K. There's no exceptions. There's nothing that would get me ready it's for the kindergarten. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's so not, not more directed. Yep. Kindergarten is more directed. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, no one to 4 4 Okay. Of 4K. Okay. Is September 1st state directed? The, the date. Okay. 
that's the I'm first just day. curious why it wouldn't necessarily it's be like the, the first, first day of school. school. No, it's a universal date. Can you scroll down just a little to the next paragraph? Um, so, this is just close your eyes. Um, so, t so up top we see September first, and in the second paragraph, we sure. first day of September. Can sure. we just pick one and go with that? Yep. Thank you. Is there a preference? Um, in the next policy, it's the first day of September, so you would have less to change if you just changed the one. But I don't. At this point, have, it's okay. I, can, I don't <laughs> have a preference. Whatever we want. Does anybody else have a preference for me? I don't have a preference. Well, another thing is September one. Moving words. September one. I'm September one. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's always going to be September. First day of September. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Something changes. <laughs> Calendar just usual. Yeah. Do you all want to see this again, or do you want to oh. remove it with revisions? I think Rod just <laughs> expressed his opinion. <laughs> I'm good with the revisions. I, I would make a motion to approve with the revisions that we've discussed simply because the spirit of the policy is there and it's pretty good clear. Okay. Great. Motion by Joel, second by Adam to Revisions to board policy 421.1 legal age of kindergarten. Roll call vote. Joe? Yes. Rob? Aye. Liam? Yes. Jim? Yes. Adam? Yes. Carly? Yes. And I'm also yes. All right, moving on. 421.2, first grade. Okay, let's see here. Similar policy. We can probably talk about some similar pieces. close it so I'm going to go from this one. Uh, again, uh, similar pieces, since we're reviewing the kindergarten legal age, we want to make sure the first grade legal age was there as well. Um, aren't really many sub substantive changes. The big change is, we scroll down to the last page, Steve. Thank you. Uh, again, looking at that um, appeal process um, and having the superintendent be the, the final authority, similar to kindergarten policy. All right, Leanne. Okay, so the first first paragraph says that no child, none, can go to, to first grade until they're six and have completed a uh, five-year-old kindergarten. So all those kids who, if we did let them start early, can't go to first grade uh, based on this policy. They have to wait. They have to take a year off and then, then go to first grade after that. Are you okay with using typically again? Typically wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't work in this case because it, it's still a this and this. It probably needs to be or has completed the districts or and or because there might still be five, but they've completed our our five year old kindergarten program, so they should be able to go to first grade. Nobody comes into first grade without having to kindergarten. Uh, kindergarten is not required in the state of Wisconsin, right? So they can, they can, that's paragraph mm -hmm. that's the rest two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're proposing here that it be and or? I think so. I think that that language does it. Otherwise, right now, we would violate our own policy if we let <coughs> someone who started early <laughs> go to first grade. Well, it's got to be and slash or, right? Because you want them to have to be six and completed five-year-old kindergarten or be six or completed, right? Because you don't, because otherwise mm -hmm. you want them to, if they haven't completed it, you want them to do something else. So I don't know if and or is the best or if there's a better or we put something in there about kids who started, you know, who, whatever we call that process, started early, early entrance. 
So there's six and I don't know. It's, now there's like oh, there's a lot. There's like nested sentences. I feel like so. I don't know the best way to word it, but that is everybody am I making? Is my English good? Is everybody making sense? You are. You are. I used to learn because that was wrong. Do you get around that by by flipping it and saying like children who are six years old and have completed the kindergarten program are admitted to first grade? But they're not six yet. Well, I was trying to think about flipping it as well, but like just starting with, you know, students who have completed the district's five-year-old kindergarten program or are six years old. But then that, what about the kids who didn't? Right, because then that close to the second program. one where there's all these expectations that you didn't complete our program. Oh, so we can say, <laughs> I'm thinking out loud, so this could be wrong. <laughs> we could say students who have completed the district's five year old kindergarten program or are six, you know, on the first day of, or have completed the following whatever we can, want to consider these things qualifications or standards. Is that maybe? So? Yes. maybe? <laughs> Student must have, to have met one of these three criteria. There you go. Criteria. Yes, that's exactly what I was no, trying to get. Yeah. Now, can we write it in Russian? <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> exactly. five-year-old program or have completed one of the following of the three criteria may be admitted into the district's first grade program and then list these standards to reflect that that they in the second paragraph should be his or her he or she excuse me Three, what did you say? Uh, 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 she's not three, it should be, it's it should be four. Well, and, right. it, and it says if they meet any of the following. I wonder if you'd be okay if Sarah and I were to bring <laughs> 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 Maybe we should revise. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, let's get it right. Is there any other questions or comments? I have a question about the way at the end the change made, and this would apply to the other one that we just did, but sure. are we comfortable specifically stating the superintendent because couldn't that responsibility be the director of curriculum, whatever, at some point? You'd say, or his or her designee. Or their designee. No. No? No, I agree oh, with you. It, okay. should be, it should be or his or her, Cause I, cause or, his I, or her yeah. designee. I'm just, I'm just thinking as we look at building a, an administrative team going <clears throat> forward and what we have today versus what 10 years from now might look like. More flexibility on the application of the policy. Yeah, as many options are possible, I think to serve families, I'm okay with. Again, this is not a hill I'll die on using Ms. Lipska's uh, language, but I. I oh, you're gonna. Uh, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> well, Battle of Reed's Hill here. <laughs> Bunker Hill is not true. Does that change the previous motion and the previous policy? I would think we'd want it to be consistent. Yeah, and, and as long as the board is okay with the amendments, I have reflected it in the um, in the kindergarten policy to add in um, his or her designee of the superintendent. Um, and then we'll add that in when we bring this back for a second reading. Would that be okay? Mm -hmm. I do have another question that's probably having to do with state law again, but just trying to think through the scenarios. Um, so there, there is no, how we do it the organization. Okay, 
I was just trying to think through it. Yeah, <coughs> since kindergarten is not mandatory, right. what exists for the kid who has the post September one birthday? So, Dr. Slano, do we need to do anything since we made and approved that previous motion? Thank you. I think we are copacetic on the kindergarten policy. Okay. Um, I would ask if maybe um, Sarah and I could please pull this one for further review and bring back for a second reading um, January 15th. Would that be okay? That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Nice job, Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you how much effort you put into these things. 70, <clears throat> excuse me, first reading, consider revisions to board policy 458. Well, yeah. this, is, this would be a quick one, I think, um, because... <laughs> 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 I don't know, look at the uh, questions already. I know nothing oh, about wellness, no. so... <laughs> Honestly, we're open to any ideas you have, but the truth be told is, uh, we recently had, as you may have seen through the weekly updates, a... Uh, uh, audit done by the Department of Public Instruction on our school nutrition program, and it was exemplary, as you would expect, coming from Michelle Dank and her outstanding work. There was one bit of feedback they gave us, and it makes sense to us, and we're just uh, passing it along to the board for their consideration, please. And that has to do with the red language. They want to make certain that our non-discrimination language relative to the USDA is embedded in board policy make sense and we hope that the board would please uh, consider that so as to be in compliance with the, with the good folks. Yes, please. Okay, uh, I'll start with my first question. I don't understand what this policy is actually saying that we're supposed to do. There's a lot of words in here about, you know, that wellness is important, but I don't understand what the policy is directing as far as policy goes. Very good, good question. Um, sometimes the feds require that we have something uh, in writing that the board supports um, certain uh, activity. One of the activities in this case here has to do with um, our overall wellness program. So your, for example, the commitment to wellness that you see under letter one, uh, Roman numeral number one, means that embedded in that policy is an administrative regulation that actually talks about what is our wellness policy. Um, and so this is kind of an overview cover sheet, if you will, of the work of the rest of the work that's done through either administrative reg or uh, through standard operating procedures. Um, and one of the things that they look for when they do these audits is that we have this this language here. That that's really the crux of it. Got it. Because I feel like that whole first paragraph is just fluffing stuff. It could probably go fluffing stuff. <laughs> HR and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, my other question is, does this policy and administrative regs will be reviewed annually by the wellness committee? Which wellness committee? We have a wellness committee in our district uh, comprised of school nutrition employees, safety employees. Um, it's not the safety and wellness committee. That, so can we just clarify that it's not, that it's the district's wellness committee and not the board's wellness committee or so? Just so like, because I was like, wait, we haven't reviewed this with the wellness committee. But we're not talking about the board's committee. Yes, let me see here. Let me write myself a note to do that. That was in paragraph? Uh, it's a standalone sentence right before the red. Okay, very good. Yeah, thank you. Um, not safety, not board safety. Okay, number nine, future agenda items. Is there 
Anything anyone wants to add, please let Dr. Salino or myself know. Number 10, our schedule of next meetings. Yes, uh, board members, just a quick reminder that on January 29th, I'm looking forward to a, a joint meeting with the village as well as the chamber. Uh, supper gets underway at 5, and then we actually have um, the, the substance of our meeting at 5.30. This will take place at the Senior Center, um, just downtown. And then January 31st is our board workshop. That will be a Wednesday night. Um, so thank you. I know that will be a busy week. Appreciate that. And uh, one last item, we do have uh, space. Uh, if people want to carpool to Milwaukee, um, we will have a Chevy Suburban likely leaving shortly after probably 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on um, Tuesday of next week. That would be the 16th. And then uh, we have another show. Uh, thanks to Brian. He's been kind enough to offer uh, meeting people up at the park and ride in Stoughton Avenue off the Beltline where the Arby's is. Um, so uh, if people wanted to do something like that, say 8 o'clock at night, um, we're happy to, to have you uh, hop along. Um, I know many of you are also wanting to drive separately and we can appreciate that too, but know that those options are available to you. I would like to ride in the suburban, please. All right. If you want to take me to all my appointments up there, that's fine. Right. <laughs> yeah. Number 11, closed session. Contemplated closed session for section 19.85, parentheses 1C, considering employment promotion, compensation, performance evaluation data for any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility to wit superintendent's evaluation and contract. Motion. Motion by Rod, <coughs> seconded by Joel. Roll call vote. Joel? Yes. Rod? Aye. Leah? Yes. Tim? Yes. Adam? Yes. 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 And also the yes. It's 8.02, so we'll read the in five minutes.